Hello all, it's a duty paid and today we have another typewriter. Now, when I get typewriters they can come in varying states, parts missing, non-working, filthy dirty. Now because typewriters generally haven't been used for 20, 30 years and they've been tucked away back of a cupboard, in the garage, up in the loft, behind the sofa, general places, they do tend to get a little bit grimy. They also can get grimy in the field and uh, I got this one in the part lot of 10 typewriters which sounds a bit extreme to get but I did manage to turn my money round on them. It was roughly about £32 for 10 so this cost me about £3.20 a unit and some change. I had to fill my car up with them and uh, drive them back but I got these ones. Now as per description, this is Olympia Traveller Deluxe. Now this is almost like the um, Apple Mac of the day. It was essential for the uh, businessman or um, travelling reporter. A lot of sort of field engineers used them and uh, they were, if you needed to produce something typed in the field, then you had one of these. It's uh, not a particular light model, but it's lighter than some of its predecessors. Um, strong, you know, sort of maybe ABS sort of cover. This one was issued, it can't pick it up very well, to ST Jones BR. I'm not actually sure what that means. I've looked up a few St. John's Bridge, but then it would be ST. Um, ST Jones Bros, you know, a company, Jones Bros, is another one. Or maybe that's just the name and he was a BR. I'm not sure if you know below. Which has just come on, excuse that. But, so, let's open this up. And basically, to open this up, you just press in the two uh, buttons together, lift straight up, and then when you get about sort of a little bit up, you want to push back. And uh, as you can see, this had, I don't know if it was original or not, but a Tipex um, kind of removal bit. And as you can see from inside in a minute, most of it's still covered in Tipex. This is machine number 4793896, which was stuck to the inside of the lid. And we have the original operate instructions. As you can see this is Olympia Traveller Deluxe and this is AEG Olympia Traveller Deluxe from around about 1970. It's a uh, particular model. This has a few um, sort of quirks on it would be uh, interesting but you get all the instructions which is uh, printed in Yugoslavia but basically how to um, put a ribbon in which I've just noted that the ribbon is actually uh, not correct on this one but I haven't actually played with a ribbon on this one um, ribbon control, insert in the paper, set in the margins touch adjuster, drawing lines, carriage release, pattern release um, backspacer, disgaging, degaging, the type bars <laughs> literally uh, all you want to know and you probably see on here how many levers and uh, buttons there are. I'll hopefully run through them. This is quite a common machine in its varying states. You can pick them up. Nice examples. Don't pay more than 40 for an absolute mint one. Um, tatty ones which still work fine. Mainly because of the build quality. Pay as little as you can really. So when you take the cover off. First thing to do is lift up the carriage return. Now you will notice it's dead. Now a lot of them, a lot of machines have a little release lever down on the uh, right hand side or the left hand side or somewhere around here. Um, not there, that's a little pop up bit. Here is the pattern release lever. So if with it forward, you can quickly center the machine, put the handle down, cover on and off you go. And that goes back there and that is now free to move. So a few controls, you have the stencil up there, you have black, which is always sort of blue, and then you have red ribbon adjust, um, go across, 
that's carriage release. Is it carriage release? Let's check the instructions. Eight. I'm not sure on it myself. Eight. Margin release. I thought it was margin release. Margin release is if you're back here and you type it on a piece of paper, you, you'll set your margins, but you might get halfway through a word and then you type a few more letters and it just dies and you might just be last two letters needed. You can press that one and you can keep on typing to where you need to go. So, going down you should have carriage return in case you make a mistake. Let's just set that margin back. Pretty standard stuff. A few quirks. You've got um, return. So how many lines it returns. Should be uh, one, two, normally a half, which only right underneath, and then it's like one and then two. But I normally like the bigger set, it pulls them out more. You've got the uh, pattern release lever here, which is a little bit bent on this one. Paper bar and little spring up paper holder. Particularly ideal if you're working in a tight environment and you don't want the paper folding over. On the right hand side here you have the uh, bar release so you can pull out the uh, paper. So about the paper, just, just slide one in as always. Start with your piece of paper, line it up with the zero mark. One on the side through. There we go. Lift up your bar. Pop under your paper. Eyeball it, see if it's correct. If it's never 100% correct, you can always loosen the uh, pattern release, finger release, and then perfect. Well, let's wind that back to begin with. Um. Probably best to show you just quickly. What am I? There we go. Oh, oh yeah. Keep forgetting that lever. This one, to adjust the firmness of the keys, you need to take the cover off, and there's a little lever. Let's just make sure that's picking up a camera. Yep, little lever there. All the way down is firm. So if you're a real Sort of uh, operatic pianist typer, dun, 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 dun. you know, really whacking the keys. You might want to turn it heavy if you're a bit of a light footer and more used to keyboards. Um, you can put that down. It does adjust it as long as it's adjusted in itself. Um, you got the obviously the spool releases here with the little keeper arms, which is handy. These type will just pull straight off and it uses the uh, free hull. They all have names, I can never remember the type. Um, always if you find any typewriter, make sure it has its spools with it because then you can get any ribbon you want to. It's a little bit messy and time consuming but you can re-spool the spools. So you don't have to, especially on something like a um, Smith Colonna Calypso. They use little spools which are almost impossible to get there. And I don't have any spare. I can always re-spool the machine and send it out. But this goes back on. This is metal. These are metal. Looking around the machine, you've got metal here. Oh, Simon Jones stenciled on the side. Um, Olympia round here. Whoops. Always entertain it. Put that back. So we got shift and a caps lock, which is nice. Easy on, easy off. Obviously a four row machine, so you have no number. Jump. Um, across the top you have a good range of characters. Now this is what I was saying the other day, this only has a pound symbol and no dollar symbol. So, like the other machine was made for a two markets. This one, if you're writing a story about, you know, American business, you might be a little bit stuck unless you do a struck through S with a back and the I, or even just have to write dollar. 
running through, you've got sort of asterisks, commas, forward slash, at symbol. I wonder why you always thought the at symbol would be useful in the future for writing email addresses. Who knows? So, uh, having actually got a new ribbon in it, so it's only come out quite um, faint. Quick. Yeah, a little bit sticky in parts. Brown uh, box. Yeah, a little bit sticky back here. Oops. Uh, here it is there. And jumps. Oops. Fox jumps over the lazy dog. Always worth one to remember and type. If you ever find a typewriter in the wild, you're thinking of buying, you know, take, always have a little piece of paper with you or ask for a piece of paper. And you can quickly see how it's typing. Now, obviously, the ribbon will probably be old, so you know, obviously, you can get a new ribbon. But if you uh, flick up a key, and it gets stuck, then you will know that needs adjustment. Um, if you go to hit a certain key and nothing happens, and you know it's a dead linkage or a spring, um, this one is uh, not particularly jammed. Let's have a look. So, how did that go? Ribbon is particularly tight on this one. Interesting. So the ribbon should be around its sidebars. This one's locked tight. There we go. You always need a little bit of slack in these machines. So instructions will help you. It says actually feed this. I don't think these are correct instructions for the machine. This I think this is a uh, S because it shows a separate guide here. They kind of worked on them and so forth. So this one actually shows the uh, two tongs at the back going behind the ribbon. And then you feed it down. And then up, and then down again because you didn't get this one. Wind that on, end up with uh, filthy hands, even though it's a uh, old ribbon, it will still make your hands nice and dirty. Must have been terrible back in the day working in offices. You have to like, get mucky hands and tip X, see, I've already put a Nice fingerprint on there. Let's just try that again with the uh, paint. There we are, there we go. Doesn't like that. There we go, and that's nice and good. Roll is still nice and grippy after all these years. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, sticky Q. Q's always stick. I don't know why. See the difference in the action? Just getting the ribbon correct in position. You know, one it went from it jamming, won't go up properly. You did the ribbon correctly and it works first time. Let's try the cat. Whoops. Where are we up to? 
brown box. Obi Does it jump over? Dog. 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 <laughs> Ding. So there we go. So, you've taken a machine that was barely working, which was producing uh, type like that. Just corrected the ribbon into its right point, and now you've got a machine that will type. So if you uh, spot one of these machines and you're looking for maybe a first typewriter then this would be a good model. It's extremely well made. It's got aluminium frame, it's solid, um, there's a lot of them so you can find them. You can take them apart, you could repaint it if you want to. No one's going to be screaming at you that you ruined a uh, machine quick look at the base you've got a metal base this is a Jones STBR again uh, rubber feet and that probably be replaceable with something similar um, let's see make sure that's angle it's a nice machine I don't know how much it weighs not too much you have a margin set round the back it's a nice sort of self-contained unit will stand up on its back as well with its case on um, the cases, every practically case I've ever seen has got a split here, mainly because when people put on the lid, they're yanking it too far forward, so I'll just put the machine back together, put the case on, make sure the back is fully down, engaged forward, and it should just fall on like a glove. If you have any... Uh, if you get into this point and it won't go down, basically what happening is, is this lip here is too high up, it's catching on the back. So be careful of that. See, won't go on. A little squeeze. Okay, come on with you. There we go. So they're always practically cracked here, and that'll, you could put, probably put a bit of super glue on that. Just look after that. So that was the Olympia Traveller Deluxe, also known as the AEG Traveller, Traveller S. I think the S only option gave a couple more options, refinement and so forth. But this is uh, as dirty as they come. This doesn't have the quintessential um, typewriter smell of it, of basically tobacco because you a bit of a um, stereotypical but all writers heavy smokers and you can imagine someone late at night at their typewriter cigarette hanging in their mouth ash dropping on the machine as they write their next novel or kill a story for the paper you know stop stop the presses I've got the paper but this is what it is. I might keep it, just clean up the action a little bit and keep it in this condition. Otherwise I'll be having to respray. You're never going to get this combination of paint scratch marks off. It is what it is. So, in, hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, I'm Judy Paid. Take care.